and, and you go quietly. And so you're so you're taking your hike at night, you know, hopefully there's you know there's good moon. And whenever you, you stop for a while and you listen, and when you hear something rustling it out in the uh, out in the brush, that's where you, that's when you turn your light on and spotlight it. And almost every time you can see a pair of eyes looking back at you. Uh, you know, possums or raccoons or whatever. Uh, we're taking a night hike at uh, uh, at Camp May, and, we're, and we were doing that. We were stopping and waiting and turning the light on, and uh, we were in front of the chapel, that, that big that big lawn in front of the chapel, and we heard something and it was like click, and it's like oh here's some ice, must be raccoon, and the ice go deer, it's a deer, uh, and then right after that we heard some more rustling and it was like there's six deer uh, in the front in the front yard of the chapel. And guys, I mean, people have no idea. They, like, everybody sees the raccoons. Sometimes they'll see a woodchuck. There are lots of woodchucks. Um, um, occasionally a possum, but I mean, the raccoons are really bold, so you'll see a lot of those. Um, a lot of guys, you know, go to Beaumont and never see a deer. It's like, that place is loaded with deer. It is, it is loaded with deer. Uh, and so I asked the guys, like, where, where are they during the day? It's like, well, you're, walk, you're walking right past them. They're sitting down in the thicket right off the... Uh, you know, they don't just magically appear when, the, when, it, when it becomes night. They're, just, they're there. You just don't know it. So what else can you do on, on, a, uh, on a camp out? Some of the uh, places they have uh, at the ranger stations you can go to and do the junior ranger uh, 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 yeah. participation. I mean, it's a cool little thing because you can get all the boys uh, a packet and they can actually, once they complete it, they go back to the ranger station and the rangers basically swears them in as junior rangers. They get little uh, badges, sometimes you get a little badge mm -hmm. there or it gets mailed to them. Yeah, that's cool. Another thing is if, if you, as, as a den leader, you know, moving up from tigers all the way through people, want, people want, it's like, well, how, how do you figure out enough stuff to do at your den meeting? It's like, get the book out. Uh, campouts are it's a it's a the perfect time to work on advancement because there's so there's so much in the, and it's in your packet too in uh, every in every year there are things like you know go on you know go on a campout do this do this do this and it's like well if you're if you're there especially the outdoor activity work um, that's that's like a really good outing and a half right there and you're in the outdoor activity work which is that the pocket plan. We do, uh, we've almost always incorporated like, some type of fishing there in our campouts. Fishing. Get, get, get the cubs involved in what's going on. Because the, the tendency, I, I know it's a, it's a lot easier, it's a lot easier for the adults just to go, all right, you guys, why, why don't you go over there and look at the creek and we'll get the camp set up. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, it's, it's a lot easier, but that's not the point of the program. Like it's so much easier. It's, it's like right now we're working on the, uh, like really doing the patrol method with the boy led troop, and it's actually it's more work on the front end to get the boys to do it than it is for me just to go. Hey, I know a lot of stuff. I'll just I'll just clean. You know, we'll, we'll do we'll do knots and orienteering this week. And I can fill it. You know, it's like no, I could do that, but that's not the point of the program. The point of the program is that the boys learn to do that and ultimately teach each other how to do that. And you know, that, that's hard because the first time I went it down is. and saw, I went down just as looking to the Boy Scout uh -huh. troop for a day, and it was like, they're like, the boys are complaining about this, and the leaders are all sitting there, and I'm like, okay, I don't understand something. Why aren't you guys getting after the boys? Uh -huh. And they're like, well, we can't. Well, what do you mean you can't? And you, it was, you can get after it, yeah, but it was like they're they're like there's a hierarchy they have to do, and I'm like, really, explain this to me. And it really was an opening experience for me yeah. because you don't realize when it comes to a, when they say a boys run troop. Yeah, um, there there's this magical thing called the scoutmaster minute, and in an ideal unit, that's all the scoutmaster gets. Yeah, it's just one minute at the end to give some word of wisdom. I usually make it like. After ten minutes, because I can run, I run on. Um, but but you know, it's just my part at the end. But that should be the only time that an adult, unless it's a special presenter, it's like you have somebody from Humane Society or a rock climbing guy come in to give you like twenty minutes of skills instruction. Um, that's the only time an adult should be speaking in front of the troop. Everything else the boys should be doing, and that requires a lot of work ahead of time. Yeah. The 
that was really an opening experience for and, and you can tell because the uh, the troops that that have the, the troops that are adult led, the guys are bored out of their minds. The, the troops where the boys are doing it, that you can just see the difference. They're all engaged mm -hmm. because they know it's like, well, I need I need to be paying attention and be courteous and listen because it's going to be my turn and I want everybody to be listening mm -hmm. to me and. One of the things that we always do, if we're out there on a Sunday morning, yes. One of the things I did find with going out, because I take both Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts out, they get me on both sides. Um, all the campgrounds usually you go to, the skies are so clear and away from the, all the city light sources. Uh, I got a telescope for Christmas some oh, cool. years back, and to bring that with it, and what you can see on it is amazing. Yeah, there's there's so much light pollution you don't you don't even know it until you get away from it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's amazing. Um, get the boys involved in, in the cooking. It's one of the most. We don't think it's necessarily fun, but the boys really do find the cooking fun um, at the day camps that we run. Uh, the cooking section that we do is is consistently one of the most popular things, and all it is is making foil packs or something. But these guys have never had it. It's like, I got to cut up a potato. And then we cooked it, and I ate it. <laughs> so it's like, wow. <laughs> you know, like, good for you. <laughs> it's the first time they've done it. I mean, it's, it's, re it's really something. Uh, so, so get them involved in the cooking as much as the stuff. Uh, keep, keep them busy. Uh, I really don't like to see, um, like, footballs and baseballs on campouts. Um, you know, maybe, maybe for just a really short time filler, because like you, you can do that at home. It's like, let's do stuff you can't do at home when we're out here. Uh, but it also means that somebody else is doing work. And the, rule, and the rule in my troop is, nobody plays until all the work is done. Because I, I had one guy, just a quick aside, we're running out of time. Um, a guy who didn't get voted into OA two years in a row, because he consistently was the one that when everybody, everybody else was working, he was running off at the football and kicking it and stuff. And they're like, yeah, right. Yeah, you're an honor camper? I don't think so. So, I mean, so the boys kind of police themselves on that, but, but keep them all busy. Uh, worship service. Uh, anytime we're out on a Sunday morning, we have a scouts worship service. Um, and somebody had a question about, like, well, how do, you, how do you know who's going to be there and how, you know, how not to offend somebody? Well, there are two different kinds, actually three different kinds. Uh, there's interfaith. Interfaith service, uh, which touches upon the common areas for most faiths. I mean, you can't universally cover it, but, but pretty much anything Old Testament, you're safe on the interfaith service. Um, if you have, um, there's non-denominational. So if you know that, that basically all of your guys are Christians, uh, you have a non-denominational service, which is just a, a generalized uh, Christian service. Or if you know that it's like, well, you're taking you're taking a uh, a troop of guys from the Baptist church. Well, then you have a full-blown you know denominational service. Uh, so at our campouts, we have four different kinds. Of, whenever there's a a, a um, district activity, uh, we have uh, Catholic worship, Lutheran, Jewish. And so we have those four going on the, on the Protestant chaplain. Um, and so once once we once we get divided out that far, I'm doing a non-denominational. But if I was taking guys all from the Baptist church, I'll do the Baptist service. This, this is the way we do it in our church, because you guys are all there. But interfaith, uh, you're safe. Um, there's, there's enough common ground that you can have a really good service um, and not offend anybody. As far as, as um, references, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's out there. 